Welcome back to another track breakdown video. I'm Jonathan Stein. You probably already knew that. Today we're going to take a look at the track I did called Driving with dope hip hop trio The Age of Luna. If you haven't checked out their music yet, please do. It is so dope. We're going to take a look at the song I did with them and uh, let's just dive right in. So, from the tippy top, there's this Rhodes part. It's just kind of these little like wrist plops. And I played this live on push. So it's just a simple C minor 9 chord that I played on push and just plopped on my wrist. Didn't even quantize it. Kept it nice and loose. So it just has that jangle, that jump, slump, slump. It has that slump. That's what you want. You want to get that slump. And then the drums come in. Now one thing I really like to do with drums and just tracks in general, especially for this kind of minimal hip hop style, is just be very slick with the delete key. So you can make a nice four, eight, two measure loop on anything. It could be your bass, your keys, your drums. And then from there you just delete little notes here and there, like a few hi-hats, a snare, a kick, a whole measure, a whole beat. And it creates for these nice little stop and goes that feel really nice. So right from the get-go, those drums come in on beat two. And the beat is very, very simple. It's really just eighth notes on the hats, bass drum, more or less on the downbeat with some little pickups, and snare slash claps. And if you take a look at the MIDI I have here, the hats are pushed behind the beat a good amount. And the way you could do that is by tapping the note right here, hitting Command-4 to turn the grid off, and then with the arrow keys, you could just nudge everything as far as you want to go. And same thing for the clap and snare here. They're ahead of the beat by different amounts, creating this very kind of disheveled, schlumpy, untogether, live, loose, human clap effect. And so the effect between the hi-hats being behind the beat and the snare being ahead of the beat creates this balance of laid back, reclined momentum from the hats and also this forward, leaning in momentum from the snare it creates a lot of pull, back and forth pull, creating that schlump effect. Let's listen again. Yeah, it's got that bop. And by the way, a lot of the drums I used in this track are actually right from Ableton Stock Library. This clap kiss is right from their claps, as is this hi-hat closed, which I just kind of rolled down the filter cut off. Here's how it sounds without the filter. I had like a typical 707, 808 electronic type hi-hat, but as soon as you cut off the super highs and maybe even introduce some resonance and drive, it gets more of that lo-fi, organic, old 70s sample sound. And these snaps here are also right from the sample library. All right, let's keep them moving. You were listening to that brand new shift that make you want All right, so not even going to tell you how many times it took me to sync that right to a point where I liked it. Yes, I put some light tuning on it. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about auto-tune here, but you could use it very aggressively, and you could also use it very subtly if you want. I'm more into the subtle style, but do your thing with it, and maybe I'll do a video on that someday. But for now, what I did was after I had sung it and tuned it, I freezed and flattened the audio so that I could continue working on the project without the auto-tune plugin in the track. And as you can see here, I took my time with warp markers to make sure every syllable was right where it needed to be. That's a big part of making your vocals groove, is making sure every syllable is like a drum. It's gotta just hit that right part of the beat. And sometimes if you can't get it right on the mic, sometimes you just gotta get in there and do it yourself. You were listening to that brand new shift that make you wanna grab your love and And as for the vocal processing, this is what a lot of my vocal chains look like. I always kind of start off with a gate that gets rid of your noise floor, any of the room noise, quiet stuff that you really just don't need in the track. And by the way, you can also choose to use that to create more of a noisy, dirty ambience in your track. That's totally a thing. Let me just show you what I mean. You were listening to that brand new shift that make you want to grab your love and dip. Ro so it's actually a pretty clean recording. The room seemed quiet. But you can hear some of the weird, like, mouth, those kind of noises. 
and uh, breaths that this helped clear out very easily. So what you do is you end up setting this line right here right around the point where stuff below the line in terms of volume is mouth noises and room noises that you don't want and anything above the line is you actually singing, talking, rapping, stuff that you do want in the track. You and you could watch in real time what makes it above the line and what doesn't. So right now this little bit was a breath, shift. this is me singing, breath, singing, flowers breath that it captured a little bit, whip. totally fine. And that is set with threshold by the way this knob. The last details are the attack, hold, and release. So if you want this gauge to activate a little more subtly, you can have the attack be a bit slow. 30 second, milliseconds is nice so that vocals still just jarringly come in. And same thing for the release, that's how much time it takes for the volume to disappear once the sound falls below the threshold. So I like having this a bit soft right here. And the floor is how quiet everything becomes below the line. You could have that at other values if you want to use it more subtly, but negative infinity, aka dead silence, I think is the way to go. So a bit of chorus, just to give the, the vocal a bit of spread, although you want it to be pretty dominantly in the center, so not too much. Now for EQing, I very often boost the 10K, which is where a lot of the, the breathy stuff, it's very pleasing, makes it more brilliant, bright. And depending on how you sing, you might need to scoop out low mids. Now at this time here, I sang in a very soft, dark toned kind of way, so I needed to compensate with that with EQ by scooping out these low mids here. You were listening to that brand new shift that make you want to grab your That's what it sounds without it. That's how it sounds with it. It ends up making it more spacious, airy. Now that's just a taste preference thing, you don't have to do that, but I highly recommend exploring cutting out these frequencies here, the very tricky frequencies. You were listening to that. Now for compression, I really like glue compressor. One for its simplicity, it's just got the go-to attack, release, and ratio speeds. Kind of think of these three as hard, medium, soft. This going from super fast to relaxed, super fast to relaxed once again. Now with vocals, I like to compress fairly aggressively, stupid attack stupid fast attack speed so that everything is just very smooth and icy and super present and regulated fast release speed for the same reason high attack ratio for the same reason and as for the threshold another reason I like glue compressors you get to watch the little meter bounce if the meter is bouncing it means that you're compressing the meter represents the amount of gain being reduced which you then compensate for in the makeup region you were listening to that brand new shit. So I set my threshold low enough so that pretty much every syllable sung, no matter how quiet or loud, is being compressed a little bit. So I really just let that meter bounce and really let the signal be nice and, and balanced. And the interesting thing is, with vocals, as dynamic as all those syllables and noises are that a mouth makes, it ends up being very discreet and pleasant. It's not like if you were to do this type of compression to a guitar or piano, it would become pretty abrasive and obvious that dynamic regulation was happening. But this works very nicely for vocal and it'll get you that smooth, present, forward pop sound that you could easily put on top of a mix. Now the last thing I do here is turn on this toggle right here called Soft Clip. And what that does is after the initial compression unit here, it activates a limiter, which means it's kind of like a end zone, nothing passes wall or no matter how much gain goes into it, that's going to be the dead end. And not only does this limit, which is very useful for regulating clipping, so you can have it as loud as possible without going into the red, but it also saturates. So it's a tonal limiter, which means that the harder that you push into it, the more it kind of saturates, overdrives, fuzzes, makes the sound dirty, whatever you want to call it. It's got a nice tonal thing. Too much is too much, too little is too little. It's up to you to find that sweet spot as it is in life. So turn on this soft clip knob and combine that with the amount of compression and style you compression use to regulate how much saturation you get to get this kind of very old school, organic, analog-y, fuzzed out tone. Now after that I'm using a little bit of multi-band compression, which could be a whole video in itself and I might end up doing that because this thing is a bitch, a powerful bitch. But right now I'm just using one of its features, the top of its three bands and I have the cutoff set at three kilohertz or so, just a little bit of above compression. Now I'm using this in a traditional way called de-essing, 
which is very important for vocals especially since the noises you make with this thing right here are very dynamic and all over the place. You've got all these different syllables and sounds and low frequencies and high frequencies. One of the more dangerous areas of this is the S sounds. So this S sounds, especially if you start compressing to make everything sit super nicely, start to jump out very aggressively. And so if you don't want to just EQ those high frequencies out entirely, which will make the sound very dull, and you just want to have a little bit of regulation for when those S sounds jump out too much, you could use multiband compression to DS. Now I choose to do 3 kilohertz. Some people like to do 4 or 5 or 6 and really get specific about the high. So you could kind of figure out where you want to put your DSing crossover or cutoff by kind of playing around and feeling out what is the body of your sound versus the high end sibilance of your sound. So you could hit solo on the multiband compressor. Just to solo the body of the sound. And to me that feels like the body, whereas this here feels like the high end. Now what you can see happening here is this little region here represents compression from above. And the ratio is 4 to 1, which is considered moderate. And the if you go to this region here, it's going to go to uh, time. I think T stands for time. It's the speed, which is very fast. Release speed is re reasonable. And what it's doing is only for sounds, basically S sounds, that make it up to this area of negative 12, which is pretty hot, are going to be compressed. Nothing below this is going to be touched. And the blue value, the blue value represents the actual output. The yellow represents what the input would have been without compression. And the difference between the blue and the yellow is the amount of gain being reduced. So you see a little bit of difference between where the yellow sits, which is what the output would have been, and the blue, which is the true output, which is what you want. So the beauty of DSing with multiband compression is you're just only affecting the tone of S sounds or sharp high frequency sounds that will irritate you that are above a certain level. And you could decide what that level is. I could just grab this and make it lower threshold so that the sound gets regulated at a darker frequency. And that works perfectly fine for this type of vocal. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset it. So that is a bit on DSing. I might cover that more thoroughly along with multi-band compression in another video. But moving on, looks like I have a very discreet reverb kind of a moderate mix, but super small decay time, so it just sounds like it's a nice present sound. And that's a bit on what I did for the lead vocals there. Now let's move along to the group vocals that come in right after it. So for these, I put eight takes of me singing the same melody, basically that same hook that gets repeated over and over in this song. And I sung it in two octaves, four octaves low, Listen to that brand new shift that make and four octaves high. And I put them on a group. I pan them all 40 left and right. Now the chain is very similar. There's gating on this entire group. There's EQing with that same low mids duck, the same type of compression, the same type of DSing, and a similar very passive kind of chill, nonchalant reverb. Now all of that is grouped into one channel to create a very unified sound. And I highly recommend doing this one to conserve CPU and workflow. Really the workflow is the big one. It's the difference between changing the settings of eight different channels and changing the settings of one channel. And to create a, just a unified, solidified sound when a bunch of parts are creating the same musical gesture. All right. Moving on, so at the same entrance here, we also have the sub come in. You were listening to that brand new shift. And let's take a look at what I did with that sub here. I made it with operator, and it is primarily a sine wave with a much subtler mix of square wave and a bit of noise, as you know I like to do in my sims. And they all have a pretty soft attack, 100 milliseconds, which gives it a very vowel-y effect. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Let's listen to it by itself. Yeah, so it's got this nice kind of fluff, vroom, 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 a lot of V sound, vroom. And the buzz comes from the square wave. It looks like the filter 
is all the way up, so I'm just letting that square be nice and buzzy, but I've got a fair amount of filter drive, so there's a lot of saturation creating more thickness. And, by the looks of it, a very, very subtle vibrato, so the pitch is wiggling just a little bit because the LFO is routed to the oscillators at a nice medium-high speed, but very small percentage. Let's quickly experiment what that would be like at a high percentage. Yeah, you get the idea. Too much. Looks like I didn't end up using chorus. That's totally fine. And what's very helpful with bass sounds, especially when you're working with synths that are designed to start you off at a very flat tone, I boosted the low end by a solid 6 decibels, starting at 70 hertz, where you really need an extra bit of fluff for that sub-sub frequency. And I made the cue a bit subtle so that it wasn't too jarring, but just a nice subtle slope. So this is what gives it its big depth. Let's compare with and without. That's without. This is with. Yeah, extra fluff. And I made the bass part work very tightly along with the bass drum so that it's just nice and punchy and deep. Let's hear those two parts together. Uh. Very schlumpy. Very schlumpy. All right, moving along. So there's a tiny bit of guitar that I played on this track. And fun fact, I actually played it on my seven string bass. This thing right here, more to come on that later. And I used uh, the stock amp and cab. Looks like I used the four by 10 bass speaker and far, and you could really experiment with this stuff. There's no true answer. And as for the amp types, that's another video in itself. But I'd say for now, just play around and experiment. All seven of these, yes, do have very different tones, and these knobs affect them very differently. I used gating, once again, to get rid of uh, cable noise and staticky stuff. And the EQing here is, once again, that heavy low mid scoop, but keeping the high end presence, and that same type of compression that I like with the soft clipping. And it's just to kind of get this very, you know, like uh, Neo Soul, D'Angelo E esque, very dry, kind of fuzzy guitar sound. And I just played this little lick here. Just this easy little hammer on lick. Now, moving on, right now we've got some female vocals coming. That's Daniela from The Age of Luna. She's got a beautiful voice, and let's check out what she sang. Now, once again, I put her four stems, which she sent to me, into one group. And then on her channel, I did my typical thing of gating. A little bit of chorus, EQ with breathy boost and low mid scoop, hard compression, subtle reverb. Now I also grabbed the last syllable of my vocals here where I say ever and just put them onto their own channel, actually group. And for their channel I have a good amount of overdrive and a very aggressive EQ focusing in the high end along with lots entire delay and a bit of reverb too to create this stereo ping pong bounce with that very fuzzed out, saturated sound. Now this is a cool way to affect just specific parts of a vocal with reverb, delay, etc. The same way you would do with A-B send. I personally don't do the A-B send things, I just create separate channels like this. For some reason to me, that seems easier. Do your thing, make it work any effing way. Have fun. So moving on. So here's this part that Danielle sang. Now moving on to Butch's vocal, he's the one with the deep voice. He is the man, by the way. So for him, he's got a super deep voice, so I kept a bit more of his low end. Definitely had to scoop down here, and I gave him the breath boost. Once again, it's the same treatment with DSing and everything, subtle reverb. Now, for his ad-libs, I did on a separate track here, and he just performed them in one take. As you can see, similar EQ, Although, the big difference here is I used 100% chorus so that his ad-libs kind of surround his lead and you can kind of hear how they blend. That's very subtle and performed very tidily with his lead so it just kind of creates a, a chorus effect really. That's really what it is. And there's additional ad-libs here where he just said two syllables and he just says wow here and those are panned hard left and right with, once again, my similar setup. And that's just to create a bit more vocal dynamic and interesting stuff happening in the left and right with headphones, etc. 
It's more fun stuff. Moving on. All right, after Daniela's second entrance, we've got Coyote, who is also the effing man. Let's check him out. So same thing going on here. He's got left and right ad libs where he performs separate takes, and I pan them hard left and right on each side as well as a few sounds that are on the center channel. And it's the same channels that I use for Butch, as you can see. This is the centered one, of course, and this is the hard left and right pans, 50 each side in one group. So as much as possible, once you have good channels and settings, especially ones that are compressed properly so you don't have to do a lot of volume regulation, you could use them all the way throughout a track with different tonal stuff going on, different people's voices, etc. Especially if it's the auxiliary things like ad-libs, etc. All right, moving on. All right, so here we've got these nice little plop sounds. Now, originally I made these with Collision, a very, very powerful physical modeler that's in Ableton. I'll talk to you more about that another time. Today I'm just gonna keep it moving because it looks like I actually flattened the auto from, audio from those to save CPU. But I put both of those Collision parts, these little plops, into a group and really just compressed slash saturated them a bit, tiny bit of reverb. Now you start to hear the reverb because the mix is pretty high and the room size is so small that you get so much of this deflecty stuff. So let's keep it moving. And once again, here's another example of that delete key thing where I just take away this downbeat. I even move this guitar squiggle over to beat two. Just to create some moments to make you go, ooh. And to set up this drop going into the second half of this track, I took a reverb that I probably bounced out from one of my vocals, just like a single note, and I reversed it. Now, in the new Ableton, you could just hit the R key to reverse audio, like such. And otherwise, you could reverse right here. And I also did a bit of volume automation so that the crescendo of this reverb is very dramatic and extreme and hits the spot. So let's listen to that. Break. And here's another one of those moments where the delete key was the real tool that's happening. So you've got this big drop here, but it's kind of an anti-drop because there's just this one whole quarter note of dead silence and it's just reduced to this single little finger snap, creating this kind of fake out moment, which makes the actual drop on the downbeat that much more swess. So for this next section, I switched to a guitar part actually playing chords. And once again, I played these on my bass and used the same routing as before. And the Rhodes are now playing chords as well. Once again, same routing. And I'm also gonna do a video breaking down this progression on push and piano. That's coming soon. And I switched from the synth bass to actual bass, played on my actual bass. And for that, I rolled off the high scratchy stuff and ducked out these low mids where kind of the bass drum is to get rid of some of the tubness, because I just want the low end. And a hard compression with saturation. I don't even know why this is here, honestly. Probably don't need it. Now this is a synth that I made with Operator that I also chose to flatten, regretfully. But uh, I will find an opportunity to show how I make this type of sound. So it looks like I flattened the actual operator and kept its effects such as chorus, EQ, and the ambiences. Now the big thing that is added here that gets, creates the fullness is this saw pad. Now, this is very uh, typical Jay Steinery right here, this type of synth. It's actually very simple. It's a single saw wave and a bit of noise, as I like to do, with a hard chorus and a bit of reverb and that classic mid dip. A lot of the want comes from the chorus. That's without it. And also from this LFO creating a fast vibrato. Here's without the vibrato. And the, here's without the vibrato in the chorus. Typical saw whip sound, obviously beautiful. So now it's got that wiggle. And now extra wonk. And there's a filter envelope. Ooh, nice, it's just a pretty triangle. So that it has a vowel sound. It goes, wow, wow, because it rises up from 400 hertz and then back down over the period of 100 milliseconds and three seconds on the way down. And a bit of saturation. 
And that is working together with the chords of the Rhodes guitar and also the organ, which is going to be another video too. There's an organ that I have been working on out of a couple operators that works very nicely through an amp cab, which I flattened for CPU reasons as well. So all these parts are working together to create this very full, kind of live soul band, but also kind of orchestral play on these chords here, these eight chords. And they're all panned a little differently. The saw is centered, the organ is 15 right, which is being balanced out by the guitar, which is 15 left. Rhodes is center once again, the bass is center, as basses should pretty much always be, because they got to hold down the foundation. You got to have a strong, centered foundation. And so now we've got more group vocals that come in here. There's this kind of play between my group vocals and the group vocals of Age of Luna. So for this interplay of my group vocals and Age of Luna's group vocals, we've got Daniela's group vocals here, a similar chain. And it's also very subtly mixed in with Butch and Coyote's kind of mumbled version. And together, it creates this kind of very full chanty And the last big element that happens is on the second half of this section, right here. Not only is there a big Lex trap crash, and it's setting up the downbeat, but there's these nice toms, which I also found from the stock Ableton library, that are kind of doing this very jungly, syncopated thing. And all of their tom placements are nudged, these four right here, are nudged behind the beat, once again creating this very jangly, loose, human y feel. And in the last section is all of these big layers that made for this climactic section, just without drums. And I just kind of let it simmer and wind out. Now the last big layer here is this background choir. So what I did is I sang these chords in four part harmony, four parts per harmony part, so 16 in total. Low part. tenor, uh, let's call that alto, soprano. And by the way, I believe that the soprano and bass parts double, creating kind of a unison melody. And then the inner voices, the alto and tenor, are kind of doing their own thing following the chord changes. And I pan them all, hard left and hard right, so that it's nice and balanced and wide and full. And I put them all into a group. And their effects chain is very aggressive. I took out all the lows and mids so that you just have this high, all this high breathy stuff. Compression and a good amount of reverb. To create this effect right here. Now, something I very often do, especially as a laptop user, is take big groupings like this that take up a whole bunch of channels just to create one task. Is, I'll hit this tab here to access the routing. I'll set up a whole other channel here copy the effects of that channel over to a new channel and then in the inputs here I select the group of what you want to record so in this case it is the background vox which I found right here and now I'm just going to record make sure that these are disarmed or deleted because you don't want to double record the effect processing and now I'm just going to go ahead and record the vocals from up here down here. Now once you've finished with that, you're going to have down here an identical bounce on just a single audio track of what all 16 of these audio tracks together were doing. And then you just slap on the same effects, turn them on, and boom, you have the same results minus all of this taking up space on your screen and most importantly CPU. So I'm going to go ahead and do something very bold and just delete this because I do not need it anymore and my computer's gonna be so much more happy, and so is my brain, honestly. So let's bring everything back in and let the outro of this track play out. I'm 
Now you can see I did a few final hooray ad libs at the end. And then I just let it end, just like that. So there you go. That's a nice in-depth breakdown of my track driving with the homies The Age of Luna. Fun, super awesome bonus. You could actually download this project with everything in it, all the samples, just how I just showed you, in the link below. So you could take a look, steal from it, remix it, sample it, learn from it, school me on it, make an even better version than me on it. Just have fun with it. Once again, thank you so much for watching. So much love to you. Like always, stay swest. Much love. Mwah.